The year is 1990. A group of four employees at the company called Softdisk located in Shreveport, Louisiana, who are tasked with developing video games for the monthly publishing of their disc magazines, have formed a collective named Ideas from the Deep. Their names were Lane Rothy, Tom Hall, John Carmack and John Romero. Around September of that year, John Carmack has developed a new, efficient graphic side-scrolling technology that would be referred to as Adaptive Tile Refresh, and with that the group set out to test the new tech by creating a demo based on the popular 1988 Nintendo game Super Mario Bros. 3. While the demo made a great impression on Nintendo, ultimately they didn't want their games to run on anything other than their own systems, and as does the PC port of the game made by Ideas from the Deep was left in dead water. However, unwilling to give up on Carmack's breakthrough, the group set out to create their own IP utilizing the tech after being contacted by Scott Miller from Apogee Software, who was interested in utilizing their talent in video game development. Their first proper game, Commander Keen, was released in December of 1990 through Apogee Publishing, and quickly became a successful shareware product. This success has prompted John Romero, John Carmack and Adrian Carmack to branch out of Softdisk and create their own company alongside Jay Wilbur and Kevin Cloud. This company, founded on 1st of February 1991, would become known as id Software. Following the success of Commander Keen, John Carmack continued his research in video game engines, which resulted in a birth of the first-person shooter genre. The new engine powered first prototype games, starting with Hoover Tank 3D, where players would take control of the tank commander tasked with rescuing civilians while fighting off wandering enemies before the time limit would reach zero. The next project, called Catacomb 3D, has improved upon its engine by introducing texture mapping and more sophisticated gameplay mechanics. While these two games were crucial in establishing the foundation of its future work, it would be their next project that skyrocketed the company into mainstream success and established them as pioneers of the industry. By the end of the year, discussions at id Software have prompted the company to permanently move away from the more family-friendly theme of Commander Keen, and with that, John Romero suggested a remake of 1981 stealth shooter called Castle Wolfenstein in form of a fast-paced first-person shooter. His contribution into the design of the new project alongside Tom Hall have resulted in a more violent type of game that hasn't been seen before on the market. Adrian Carmack took charge of the artwork, while Bobby Prince composed the now iconic soundtrack for the game. As the excitement about the unique experience that was brewing at its software has grown, so did the concerns regarding copyrights related to the name Wolfenstein. However, upon learning that the original developer of Castle Wolfenstein had shut down all the way back in 1986, its software was able to track down and purchase the right to the franchise and its name from the sole remaining owner around April of 1992 for merely $5,000. After roughly six months of development, Wolfenstein 3D would finally see the light of day on May 5th, 1992, in form of a shareware release of the first episode of the game, while the full trilogy of missions would ship to the customers through mail order just a few weeks later. The game was an immediate commercial success, selling around 4,000 copies a month. This has prompted Scott Miller of Apogee to convince its software to develop additional three episodes called Nocturnal Missions. The game could be purchased either as two separate trilogies or as a single package containing all six episodes. Over the summer, most of its software has continued to work on a standalone expansion called Spear of Destiny, which included a brand new non-episodic format that spanned over 21 levels, with brand new bosses and soundtrack once again composed by Bobby Prince. Spear of Destiny would release on September 18, 1992, and much like its predecessor was a great financial success. By the end of 1993, sales of both Wolfenstein 3D and Spear of Destiny have reached over 100,000 units each. The game has put players into boots of BJ Blaskowicz, a Polish-American soldier tasked with one thing and one thing only, killing Nazis. Each level featured a maze of dungeons and dark corridors that players would have to find their way through by securing the keys and escaping into the next level via an elevator, all whilst facing battalions of Nazi soldiers. The enemies varied from German shepherds, regular Wehrmacht personnel equipped with pistols, dangerous members of SS wielding machine guns, elite officers, mutated Nazi experiments, Pac-Man and of course a variety of bosses that would await the player at the end of each episode, from infamous enforcers such as Hans Gross to the now legendary Mecha Hitler. While not necessarily a plot-driven game, it did have a story which was mostly told through the board screens showed at the end of each episode. 
The first one of them, Escape from Castle Wolfenstein, centered around PJ breaking free from the titular castle after his capture that followed the events of Spear of Destiny. The second episode, Operation Eisenfaust, had BJ fight through the hordes of Nazi mutants in order to find and assassinate the mastermind behind their design, a man known as Dr. Shabs. The famous third episode, Die Führer Die, has put BJ on assassination mission against Hitler himself, while the episode 4, called Dark Secret, featured the main hero destroying chemical weapon designer Otto Giftmacher. In fifth episode of the game, Trail of the Madman, BJ goes after the mastermind behind the chemical warfare only to be ambushed by Gretel Grosse, before finally confronting General Fettgesicht at the end of episode 6. The fast and addicting gameplay of Wolfenstein 3D, while simplistic by today's standards, was something truly remarkable back in the day. The success of the game was the definitive spark that lit the first-person shooter genre into existence, with its software leading the charge on that field for years to come. The legacy of Wolfenstein was directly continued in their next project, which has popularized the genre on a much wider scale, a game that would become known as Doom. While its software has never directly spearheaded the development of another Wolfenstein game, they would license the IP to fellow industry veterans who carried the torch forward with releases such as 2001's Return to Castle Wolfenstein made by Grey Matter Studio, Wolfenstein Enemy Territory by Splash Damage, Wolfenstein 2009 by Raven Software, and finally the most recent reboot series made by Machine Games. However, the legacy of Wolfenstein 3D spreads beyond a single franchise, as the ripples of its influence can be seen in almost every modern shooter. It is a title that has not only spawned a series of successful games and established its software as pioneers, but also enabled an entirely new genre which quickly became a big part of the gaming industry. Because of that, it is only fair that Wolfenstein 3D is considered to be forever the grandfather of first-person shooters. 